Welcome to Universal Man, where we help you unleash your apex potential. My name is Mark Quepit. Pronouns, he, him. Orientation, super straight. <laughs> Have you guys seen this super straight thing? Hashtag super straight. Check it out on Twitter. It's, uh, it's honestly pretty hysterical. Uh, some of the memes are, are truly quite funny. Like I saw this and I was just like, what, what is going on with this? And I, and, and I dug into it. And here's, here's what super straight means for those of you who are not paying attention. The, uh, the gender activists on the left, they have uh, gone through a, uh, a movement to try and redefine what it means to be sexually straight, heterosexual. According to them, regular straight now means that, like, for me as a man, it would mean that I am attracted to both biological women as well as trans women. So it would mean that, you know, because I'm straight, like if someone identifies as a woman, even though they have a penis, me as a heterosexual, normal straight man should also be a, attracted to them. Because, you know, in their mentality, a woman with a penis is 100 percent absolutely totally a woman. And so therefore I should, you know, include her in who I am attracted to. And <laughs> what people came up with, well, is like, okay, well, I'm not into that. And so that means I like I need a name for it, right? Like that's your guy's whole shtick is that you come up with a name for whatever your little wrinkle of sexual orientation is. And so it's like, all right, if that's normal straight, well then I'm actually super straight. And uh, that means that I do I am not attracted to women with penises. And you know what? I I personally I fall into that category. And you know, now that I've tried it on for size, now that I got to see what it's like to find my own little sexual niche, it makes me feel a little special. It makes me feel a little good. I I I get the appeal now. You know, I thought it was silly before that we'd come up with, you know, how many dozens of different sorts of genders and orientations are there now? You know what? I don't think it's that dumb anymore. What's even more interesting is uh, how this is frustrating the people who are pushing for this kind of thing because, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like using their own logic against them. They say it's, you know, transphobic for you to identify as super straight. Um, but isn't that the whole idea around this is that you should be free to be attracted to whoever you want, no matter who it is? Like, you know, why, why is that? Why, why is it only that? <laughs> why does everybody need to be attracted to transsexuals? That That doesn't seem accurate. You don't, you don't say that everybody should be attracted to heterosexual men or, you know, lesbian women or anything like that. Why, why is this group special? Hmm. seems a little, little odd to me, but what it got me thinking about is just this idea of normalization, right? Like, cause what they're trying to do is they're trying to normalize something that, you know, I see as uh, essentially homosexual, like for me to be attracted to a person with a penis, that would be a homosexual orientation. And I'm not saying it's good, bad, whatever. It's just definitively that's that's the way it seems to me. And they want to normalize it that no, it's it's totally appropriate for you to be attracted to that. <clears throat> and in fact, if you go against that, well then you're actually a bad word. You're a transphobe. That's that's what normalization is really about. It's about removing your ability to question something. And don't get me wrong, there are Plenty of things that are, I think, are worth normalizing, right? Like the idea that every person, regardless of their race, orientation, gender, whatever you want to call it, they are of equal human dignity, okay? And so, you know, we should normalize that. That should be a non-question, you know? And, and people who challenge that, they should be rightly called out for it. So things like overt, you know, clear racism, that. That's horrible, right? That it's like treating people with equal dignity. That should be 100% normalized. But the thing is that not everything deserves that. Even things that should be allowed. So that's like you can uh, you can allow something, or you can say something should be able to exist without normalizing it. And that's something that I see in our culture today that people don't quite understand is that normalization really should be reserved for very, very special sorts of things. And, you know, like to claim that <laughs> to, to to claim that I should be attracted to a person with a penis and that I shouldn't even question that, 
that's definitely not falling into the category of the things that should be normalized, right? Um, and so, like, we we could just let to bring this back, right? Like, sometimes we just we need to question things. Like, if if we're talking about gender reassignment surgery, if we're talking about giving hormone blockers to kids, like, <sighs> some of that stuff. Maybe it should be allowed. All right, let's just let's just say that it it should be okay for people to do that. It's an entirely different line of reasoning and, a, and an entirely different stance to say that it shouldn't be questioned, right? Because sometimes there's just edge cases to things, and yeah, should be allowed, should always be questioned. Like so, for me as a you know person who believes in the inherent dignity of each person, that also includes unborn people. So like you know. Let's say let's say I, I believe that there should be abortion, okay? I don't believe it should ever be normalized. I think it should 100% always be questioned and challenged. It shouldn't just be like, oh, yeah, a super casual thing, pop in, pop out. No one's got to ask any questions. No one, like, you know, you don't need to worry about it, that sort of thing. It's just something that has way too – it just seems too much gravity to it in order to be dismissed in that way. I think that the thing that I see in our culture today is that a lot of the bad stuff comes from things being normalized due to bad intentions, right? Like it's not because someone – like because there's been a consensus on what is a fundamental good, it's more because someone wants to either one impose an ideology, which is what's going on with you know <laughs> this whole super straight debate. Um, but like, so that's one kind of scenario. Someone's trying to impose an ideology and make it unquestionable. That's an issue, major issue, because when you remove debate around something, well, then you just kind of set yourself up for way way bigger problems. Um, but the other place where I see normalization occur and it's kind of like even sadder is just when there is like people who stand to incentivize from just like poor behavior. So for example, like a lot of our cultural norms, I think they've eroded in major part because of our entertainment industry. It's like our entertainment industry knows that people are attracted to scandal. They're attracted to, you know, things that are taboo. We like we we think it's interesting. We tune into it. And so like you just look at a lot of our entertainment, like what does it focus on? It focuses on, you know, pretty like morbid stuff, like murder, death, you know, affairs, uh, you know, all that kind of thing. And when we see enough of that, Eventually, we become desensitized to it. We just assume that this is the way life goes. Like, uh, I, I was watching, my wife was like really into this um, kind of like soap opera y sort of show for a little while. She like rarely gets into that, but this one like hooked her. And I caught like the last episode or something of the season. And all the people in there are essentially like morally degenerate. You know, they have very bad relationship values and, you know, they're very narcissistic and they, they are completely unaware that they are at fault for their poor behavior. And, you know, they cheat on each other and, you know, sleep around and, you know, all this kind of scandalous stuff. And there's so much TV that's been like that for so long. And I can't, I just have to imagine that that has had a major impact on the psyche of, uh, of, of our culture, right? Like once you see something enough, it becomes normal to you. And so, you know, as someone who cares a lot about the, the the relationship between men and women, particularly, you know, the stability of marriages and that sort of thing, when you have our culture obsessed with everything that goes outside of that because it's juicy and interesting and exciting and that sort of thing, uh, I just don't think it, it serves us. So you have to just always be careful of what is being pushed to be normal, right? And the best thing that you can do is just continue to question it, especially rationally, because rational questions, they stick in people's minds, right? They, they, they hit them kind of hard and it, it prevents, I think, you know, destructive normalization. And so I think that's, a, that's an important thing.